asked me to get my hamstring off the ground. <laughs> Uh, really, it's, it's nice to, you know, cut out the middleman, just you and I jump together. It's really, it's really, really, yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Just cut the fat out. Cut know? it right out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's make it official. Vancouver, please give it up for Jensen Ackles. <laughs> Like being back, yeah. When's the last time you were here? Uh, well, um, did you have you been back since we wrapped? I came back recently, uh, it was in August, came up for like a few days to uh shoot a couple days uh, on a film oh, right. that was filming here. Uh, but it was quick, I came in. Got out. It wasn't. It wasn't this experience. This. This feels like a homecoming. Yeah. It, it really does. And we got to see a whole bunch of familiar faces last night. Uh, a bunch of the crew. Who I, there's probably a few uh, peppered in through the crowd here. Um, but uh, we had a little. Uh, it was kind of an unofficial rap party, something that we didn't get to have when we when we rapped 15 years on the show, which was really sad because we, we rapped in the middle of, of 2020, which we all know what was going on then. And uh, so to, to, to see all those faces not behind masks and get to hug them yeah. and get to tell them how much they, they you know, mean and continue to mean to, to us and to us and the fact that this is still living and still going and still breathing and they're like, this is crazy. Stop what you're doing. Put it up. It's over. I'm like, no, they can say that. They, um, it's just, uh, it's yeah, it's it's fantastic. And I'm just I'm heartbroken that Jerry's not here. And I know he's really bummed out. And he sends his love. And he's like, well, it just means we're gonna do it again when we come back. Um, well, I hear you might have some some guest stars on the panel. We'll see. I'm trying to. Get enough people at the backstage we can line and we can stack them on top of each other and make them as tall as Jerry. Oh, good. So yeah, I'm, working right. on, I'm working on a thing. That's. <laughs> In the meantime, please enjoy. In the meantime, you're stuck with me. Yeah. Let's do this. Enjoy your time. Thank you. Well, hello. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? Just. Just an honor for my boy. Actually, I got a better idea. There we go. There we go. Um, all right, well, this is usually the part where Jared and I talk uh, nonsensical about uh, whatever we're thinking about at that time, but since he's not here, I'm just going to get with the questions. How about that? Hi, Marianne. I asked uh, Kim Bree a similar question. Um, what advice would you? Sorry. What advice would you give to newcomers on uh, set, whether it's cast or crew members? Have fun. Uh, I was asked recently by the uh, one of the producers on Big Sky. I said, "How did you manage to go 15 years on one show?" And I said, I'll tell you, there's a, probably a lot to that, uh, a lot of ingredients that went into that, but I can tell you one that was that I remember uh, the most, and that was the amount of laughter we had on that on that set. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't remember laughing uh, harder during those 15 years than I did when I was at work. Um, and that says a lot. That says a lot about the environment that we were working in. Um, I often say that I, I get to do this. I don't have to do this. And it was something that I, I looked forward to every day. Now, sure, some days were tough. Some days were hard. Some days I didn't want to get out of bed. But uh, no matter what, we, I, I don't think there was a day that went by where we didn't chuckle or laugh or make Brad cry. Uh, 
So, yeah, that's that's what I would say, and that's what I continue to say to people. I say to the to the guys on the on the Winchesters, um, John Showalter, who um, is definitely part of the SPN family, is down uh, supervising in New Orleans and watching over uh, the show, and I impressed upon him uh, very heavily, and I continue to I'm like make sure that that set is having a good time and make sure that the egos are checked and make sure that there's nobody yelling and there's no uh, there's no drama. The dra save the drama for when the cameras are rolling. There's no room for that when they're not. And um, it seems to be going, going like that so far. So if I can bring that kind of stuff to work or I can encourage people to do that when they go to work, then I think we're all going to have a better time. Thank you so much. Thank I hope you. I see you on the So do I. Hey there. Hi. Um, I'm a really big fan. I've been watching Supernatural since I was 12, so it was over half of my life. Um, I, was just, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering, I know with COVID, you guys kind of had the ending you wanted, so how would you have wanted Supernatural to end? Well, I can tell you what, what was originally planned, which I, I think some of you may know. Um, and it's, so it's no secret, but um, the original script before, uh, before COVID hit was uh, everything up to the point where Sam arrives in heaven was all the same, okay? But what was different in what ended up being and what was originally written was instead of us meeting on the bridge there and having that little moment, that wasn't there. It was him arriving in a dusty parking lot with a lone car in front of a, a, a road, a, like an old roadhouse tavern. And he walks, he sees the Apollo and he walks up and then I come out the front door. And we have that moment in the parking lot that we had on the bridge. But instead of it ending there, I say, come on inside. There's, there's a few people that want to say hi. And we go in and what we were gonna do is we were gonna have everybody that was available that could come uh, back to Vancouver, all the cast and all the crew members, we're all gonna be in the tavern. And then we walked through and on top of that, the band Kansas was gonna be the house band. <laughs> they were getting on a plane when they were told not to get on a plane because of COVID. Like, I, they literally were about to be here the next day when we shut down. Um, so that's the major difference. And I would have loved for that to have happened. But unfortunately, we, we had to pivot and we had to do what we did. And I, I think it was fine. It was still, it was still a heartfelt moment. We just didn't get that extra, that extra sauce that would have been nice. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Not expecting to be chosen, so kind of shaking right now. Uh, so. I'm shaking too, so that's fine. We're in this together. Uh, so, my name is Luciana. Uh, my question for you so, I have family that's in Austin, and I just want to know if you guys have any plans to come down and see the show. Um, I'm going to be at your show in Austin, and I'm going to be at your show in Austin. I'm going to be at your show in Austin. I'm going to be at your show in Austin. Uh, since I was little, and my mom, as a surprise, took me to your brewery, the original one. I think there's a new one now. Um, no, there's only one. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Same one. And um, she got a video of my reaction, and I just bloody murder screamed when I realized where we were, and my stepdad turned around and was like really confused at what was happening. It's funny. Well, my question for you. It's like, wow, she really likes beer. <laughs> Stepdad's like, I mean, listen, a good pilsner can go a long way, but holy crap. Okay, sorry. <laughs> my, my question for you is, what was, like, the idea? Because, like, brewery, especially because since it's usually um, for, like, non-minors and stuff, they don't have very much, like, things. Like, we have a brewery in my town where we have, like, stuff for minors to do. But you named it uh, Family Business Brewery, um, which... 
obviously came from the show, but like, what was your idea to like mix that idea of like a brewery that's usually for older people, and then the idea of also like a family thing where there's like music and there's events and there's like um, places for kids to play and food vendors? What was like your idea to mash that together? It was kind of all just a natural progression. Honestly, there was no grand design when we started out. Uh, it started out with me and my brother-in-law, Gino, making our own horrible beer in the backyard. Um, and then kind of just being obsessed with that. It was, you know, this was probably 07, 08, when like the craft beer uh, industry was really like taking off. And we just kind of got the got the itch. We were like, let's, let's maybe like open a little tiny we were gonna open like a little nano brewery, you know, even like a three barrel system or something. And that obviously kind of progressed. And then um, we got this property and, and we we're like, well everything that we had been told from we'd met with a dozen different uh, owners of breweries and brewmasters over the course of like doing our kind of homework on what this would look like. And every single one of them was like, we outgrew our space in three months, or we are at capacity in, you know, of just a few months. They're like, if you can have room for growth, make room for growth. Well, we built like this 10,000 square foot <laughs> facility. <laughs> so we definitely, we, we built for growth. But then that just kind of like, we were like, oh, but we should have, we should have a place for like kids to play because we had because I had kids, so we put a playscape up, and then we were like, oh, we should do a bocce court, and we should have cornhole, and we should have horseshoes, and we should just make this like a, a you know a place where people can come and hang out in the afternoon and have fun with with a whole family. And all the while, we hadn't really picked a name for the brewery. We just kept calling it the family business because. It was just Gino and I, <laughs> and also we're, I thought it was kind of tongue-in-cheek because it also had a relation to the show. And then we went online, it was like that name was available, because a lot of times there's like, you know, copyright issues and stuff. And it was available, I was like, should we just name it that? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's how that happened. So literally, there was no grand design, it just kind of all happened naturally, and it, it, I think it fell into a really good place, and it's a, it's a good spot. If you're ever in Austin, you should try it, try it out. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Hi there. I'm Julie. Uh, this is my first con, so crazy. Welcome. Um, have you and Jared ever gone driving in baby around Austin because you miss playing Sammy Jean so much? <laughs> 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 Please say yes. <laughs> um, uh, yes. <laughs> but not because we missed playing Sam <laughs> <laughs> Because we're children. <laughs> and we wanted to go fast in the car that we spent so much time in, and we thought it'd be great to do that. Um, right now, I will say that both both the Impalas, the, uh, the the hero, which is number one, the one that I have, and then number three, which was the backup to number one. Number two was the stunt one that got beat to crap. Uh, but number three was the that was the backup to whatever whatever number one wouldn't start. <laughs> you got to remember these were just picture cars. These weren't like you know car show type cars. I mean, there were there's a reason that door squeaked the way it did because they weren't. Uh, you know, they, they weren't like high-functioning automobiles. <laughs> um, that being said, now that Jared and I own both of those, um, both of those cars are currently in the same shop in Texas right now, getting, getting done to where we can put them in a car show. I will say, though, I will say, leaving the squeak in the door, though. <laughs> not touching the paint job. So every scratch, every dent, every nick, every paint chip that was on the car when it was on screen will remain the same. Um, we're just 
we're just getting everything underneath it nice and reliable. <laughs> and because we both live in Texas, we're also putting in air conditioning. <laughs> and a sound system. Because what they did when Jared and I were there is they stripped the car of anything that we could annoy the crew with. <laughs> it used to have police lights on the gone. Because usually those were high beams pointed directly into the camera lens and Brad was like, oh. Uh, they took the horn out, because that was always fun when somebody was right over the hood, like adjusting a light, and just be like, ah! They removed the horn, uh, they removed the stereo system, because we kept playing music. So they had to take a lot of stuff out of the Impala just so they could get through the day with us. Because again, we're children. So I'm having to put all that stuff back in now. <laughs> so it'll be street legal. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm excited to get them back. And then Jared and I can race them down South Congress Avenue. <laughs> and get arrested. <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Shane from Seattle. Uh, hey. Time. Thank you so much for the Winchesters, you and the whole team. Um, but I, I just, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but the use of explicit, intentional, and non-tokenized queerness and color is just so important. Especially in this world, so thank you for giving that to this, this world, this canon. Well, and I appreciate what you just said, like, not tokenized, not, you know, it, it, it is intentional. Because I think it's a reflection of what we're really like as a society. Not now, but even then. It was just never, it was never talked about then. It was never um, shown. And so I think it makes absolute sense to be true. And that's where that came from, and I don't, I've never seen anything wrong with that, or why would that would be shied away from. So yeah, why not celebrate it? Um, and we know that in an emergency, he's somebody you definitely want on your team. But when it comes to emotional urgency, probably a different story. Um, so if, in 1518, if the empty had not come so quickly to take cast, and you had, if Dean had... I thought you meant the 15, year 15. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going back. That's a renaissance. Let's do this. Is that the renaissance? Right? Somebody, who knows more than me? More than I do. Yes, that is the Renaissance? Nailed it! See, I can learn things. Um, okay, so, season 15, episode 18. That would be the last... Sh no, second, third, fourth, second. I'm done. Renaissance! Said, what do you think his response would have been? Um, you mean what would he have responded to in that moment had he had the time? Yes. Um, that's interesting because I I have I have an answer for that. And I had an answer for that in the, the next setup, camera setup, after uh, Cass Steele was taken and Dean's on the floor and puts his, I put my, my head in my hands. Um, and in that moment, I, I, I did that not because I just lost, well, because I, I he, because I lost Cass, but also because I didn't, I didn't say anything, I didn't give him anything. And what I had in my head was, I should have said, I love you too, and hugged him. Um, and I know that some, you know, people out there that might try to sexualize that in a way, and it, and it, and it doesn't, doesn't have to be that. Um, it, it, it was, there was, you know, two, 
two sentient beings, essentially. I don't know if you consider the angel, but what, what he was in front of me was a family member and someone that I was a brother in arms and someone that Dean truly loved, much like Sam. Um, and so losing, I mean, essentially he was, he lost his brother in that moment. And that, uh, um, and that's how I think, that's how I played it from Dean's perspective. Um, so yeah, there you go, thank you. Hi. What is your favorite story to tell your kids? My favorite story to tell my kids? Um, so I'm really glad that you asked that, Amara. Um, so I, I do this thing at night where I just continue, I just make up stories until my kids tell me that I need to leave. Um, it, there's, it's generally filled with lots of voices, um, and what I do is I will uh, stand at the door and I will, I will be dad, and I'll be like, is there anybody else you want to say goodnight to? And they'll come up with some name, and then I'll walk away, and I'll create a character and come back in and play that character, and I'll tell them stories, or I'll tell them jokes. So there's not necessarily a, a, a book that I read. I literally just put on a performance for them every night <laughs> until they get tired of me and kick me off stage. <laughs> Wait, what? Say that again? Well, I like some gum. Could I give you some gummy beers? Please. <laughs> are they are they half chewed? Please, oh <laughs> little bag of gummy bears. <laughs> Thank you, Mara. I'm gonna keep these for later. <laughs> Very sweet. Top that. Yeah, I don't know. Give me a three pound bag of gummy bears. That's how you top that. It's all good. Oh, wait, wait. I... Every little documentary you talked about it several times about how you and Daniel did a little watch party of Lazarus rising. And I was wondering. I did that dialect. Uh, oh, that wasn't Ruth? That was. It was amazing. Uh, you mind if Misha joins me for a little bit, guys? Uh, well, we, we talked, I was talking earlier, uh, I believe it was in the, uh, the yesterday, uh, one of the, the meet greets, and I was saying, what, what? I'm talking to my friend. All right, stop. Look, you just got here. Don't ruin this. <laughs> and, I, and they were like, you know, what's, are you going to... so many more people in your pen? <laughs> they thought Jared was going to be here. <laughs> must have been really bad traffic yesterday, huh? <laughs> Um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever. Uh, you interrupted her question with a really silly question. What would you like to answer first? You, Misha. Me. Oh, me? Yeah. What am I? You want an answer to your horrible question? Yes. Or can I answer? No, I'll take my horrible. You, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Daniel and I did do a watch party of Lazarus Rising. Um, we even videoed it and invited someone to join the Zoom and invited Misha into the Zoom, into the Zoom, not the room, Zoom. 
and had a, a like a three-way video conference. <laughs> And what? <laughs> Doing what on purpose. What are you talking about? Get out of the gutter. Um, and uh, uh, we had it. Uh, no. <laughs> that doesn't work. No. Norton mm -hmm. said, "Who finished first?" No, you don't repeat it. <laughs> I was actually, I was pointing it out to illustrate. You don't repeat. <laughs> I was when I turn around and I say, "No, mm -mm. no." <laughs> I was trying to illustrate how... Is there anybody else back there that could come out? <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> um, no, whatever, never mind. What's, let me change the subject, please. Hey, uh, I might bring it down a little. Okay. That was bad, too. Um, so, uh, one thing's been bothering me. We all know, in order to get to heaven, you gotta die first. So how did the Impala die? Because <laughs> <laughs> the Impala is now in heaven, because I don't drive anything nearly that special, and if she showed up in heaven when I was there, I'm coming back down and haunting that hell out of her. Well, I don't think the Impala ever dies. There's just, uh, there's just a heaven version of it. Yes. And that's all there is to that. <laughs> Which means, in the supernatural world of things, somewhere a baby is just sitting. Oh. Rusting. Collecting dust. <laughs> Which, ooh, when we do the reboot, that'd be a good scene. When we come back from heaven, finding the car. Let's talk to the team about that. I mean, it's, yeah, it would be in Sam's garage. Maybe Sam's son is driving. What's his son's name? James! Right. Uh, He's gradually goes of ours. Aren't they? Aren't they go? Um, yeah, is that a fair enough question? The Impala is immortal. It I'm is. Totally good with that. Okay. Long live the Impala. <laughs> you know I will. Hi. Hi, Jensen. Hi, Misha. Hi. Excuse me, my voice is kind of gone. Um, I, uh, I've really been enjoying your character, Jensen, on Big Sky. And uh, I, I love all the little Easter eggs that are in there, like the, the salt or the demons. And like, did, did you hear that? Yeah. I did hear that. Yeah. And like, this is my first Did you throw that in, or did they put it in? No, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and the werewolf comment, it's my first werewolf. And, uh, the what? The werewolf. Oh, yeah. This yeah, this is my, no, this is my so, first werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> Did a couple of different variations on that one, but that was the one I wrote with. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if you can share with us how that's coming about in your as you're filming. Are you putting those in as you go? Are you suggesting them to the writers? And uh, also, I'm wondering if we're ever going to meet Arlen's brother, who we've heard a little bit about. Uh, that I have no idea. Uh, the brother that I had, but I, I don't know. Um, do you but, forget you're not filming Supernatural? Does that happen? So no, I'm, I'm, I'm basically just being a different version of Dean. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't um, it. <laughs> I'm not that talented. <laughs> just do the same trick. I'm a one-trick pony. Um, I, uh, I, I do... Uh, they have given me some liberty to explore uh, the dialogue, um, I, I would say more than apparently has been given on the show in the past. The other actors are like, you're letting the We don't get to say anything except what's written. And I'm over there going like, how would I change this dialogue? Um, and, uh, and now the writers are picking up on that and they are putting in some, some things and then they're also uh, teeing me up to come up with, with other Ideas and I, 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 I often the script is just Jensen blank. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> figure it out. <laughs> no kidding, I forget what script it was, but uh, and I, it wasn't one time, but I remember uh, one of Robbie's scripts in Supernatural, he wrote in there, he was like, and then just whatever Jensen wants to say in the stage direction. <laughs> Like, I don't, I'm not even going to write the dialogue, just however he wants to respond to this situation, he can respond. Uh, and not even Dean, like Jensen. In the, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that that goes to the network and then the studio, and they're like, yeah, this is yep, yeah, uh, this is fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll sign off on we'll that. We'll sign off. Um, yeah, so I, I am getting a little a, a little bit of fun freedom on, uh, on, on Big Sky, which is, uh, you know, it makes it fun. I enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. Are you, what, are you. Are you getting that kind of? It's funny. I, a little bit, yeah. Um, and I, I, I have a, uh, a very open dialogue with the writers about where things are going, what we're doing with it, and it's kind of, it's kind of fun to be like shaping things like that, which I did less of, I think, on Supernatural. It was this is. Well, like, it's also largely character. <coughs> You know, you, it, was, it was codified at that point. Yeah. Now we're, uh, we're at the, I mean, both of us. Whatever that means. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, cod. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cod piece. Wait. I'll never forget when I was having my soldier boy at <laughs> There came the moment when the bucket of cod pieces came out <laughs> and I had to choose one. <laughs> You're like, I'll take that tiny little one right there. That's perfect Here's the funny thing is, I, you know, <laughs> I picked one after a few tries and, and the one I, I was like, oh, yeah, this, is, this is good. And, um, <laughs> and then, and then, like, I was talking to, to Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Dean, and he was like, hey, how's the, how's the uh, Soldier Boy outfit come along? I heard those things are amazing. And uh, I was like, yeah, I just went in for, like, my fourth fitting. And he's like, talking about the God piece. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sent him pictures, and I'm like, well, it's between one, two, and three. <laughs> and I realized I'm having a conversation with my dad about the size of Weird world. Anyway, modified. Yeah, go ahead. Modified. Um, yeah, you you weren't really. Speaking of wardrobe, so I have uh, I have a sex scene coming up. Uh, uh, finally, <laughs> on Tuesday. And um, let me ask you something. Yeah. Uh, shirtless. Yeah. Oh. Shirtless. Why is it that at this stage in our careers we are taking our clothes off the most? <laughs> Not only that, it makes me crazy. They're also like, they're like, they're, my show is all these like young, yes, attractive. <laughs> What's happening? Still of reproductive age. <laughs> So many, so many comments right now in my head. Anyway, so you know how it is, right? Like you have, yeah. you have a shirtless naked scene coming up, you you stop eating, uh -huh. you get breast implants. Yeah. And, uh, and and I've been I've been running lately and I run with a pair of shorts that come down to about here. Mm -hmm. And I overheat, mm -hmm. so I run with no shirt on. So oh, no. I'm, no, no, Let's see where this is going. Fine. So I tan uh -huh. from you know from here up and from here down. Um, I was looking in the mirror the other day. And I, was like, I have this scene coming up, and it, it's it's there's this like blinding light coming from the midsection. So I did what any no let go. Let go. The lights are tanning salon. <laughs> and so now it's hot pink. <laughs> and 
Oh, why didn't you call me? It's called, it's called a spray tan. I know, I, a lot of people have already told me about that. I just thought it's so Trumpy. <laughs> But, uh, Don't use his spray tan artist. <laughs> Clearly, the mixture is not right. Sheets of skin peeling off of me during the uh, so take. Uh, yeah, yeah, during the day. You're gonna send me bolting. <laughs> so what is this? It's Tuesday. It's like in two days. Yeah. You think I have time to get in shape? <laughs> Two words for you. Yes. Photoshop, buddy. <laughs> Somebody yelled out, Photoshop. <laughs> which would, uh, which would imply that he needs that. Oh, I was gonna say, you're good. Yeah, no, I wasn't gonna say that. I was gonna say body double. <laughs> I fell for that. I thought you were being nice. No. <laughs> you know, you're out of practice. <laughs> You'll be fine. Chin up. My name is Ellie. I've flown here from Australia. Uh, it's been amazing. Okay, um, so Jensen, your performance in The Boys was outstanding. Um, okay, so Misha, this doesn't concern you. Stand down, Misha. You're good. Um, my question is, how does Soldier Boy compare to Dean Winchester? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I think there's quite a quite a big difference there. Uh, he sold the voice from a different time. You know, he's he he would be. There's a possibility that he could be Dean's grandfather, uh, which Dean would be like, "Hey, Gramps, listen, I got your gruffness and maybe some of your toughness, but." You can't say that. <laughs> um, you're gonna get us all canceled. <laughs> uh, I think I think Dean's probably a little bit more um, authentic in his heroism, and I think Soldier Boy is uh, basically a fake, and he's a, a a big problem, and he is trying to cover that with his. Uh, with his grandeur and his, and his you know, superpowers uh, about what, how weak he is inside and how, uh, how much of a complex he has. I don't think Dean has that. I think Dean's pretty secure with who he is and he, and he believes in himself and has the confidence that he's doing the right thing. Soldier Boy is kind of a mess. Yeah. 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 Uh, Soldier Boy wishes he was Dean. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. But would never admit that. Also, uh, I think Soldier Boy is in it for himself. Yes. And Dean is, he's on a mission. Like, he's, he's fighting for everyone else, a greater good. Everyone else before self. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think you can see that out in the world. Like, people that behave that way. And, and Soldier Boy is, is like the pitfall. And they're they're very close together. Like you could you could very easily veer from one to the other. But I think the yeah, that's it's it's about being like out for yourself as opposed to out for the greater good. Yeah, ego, really. Um, you know, there's that moment in, in the boys where 
you think that Homelander is bringing his father in, and his and there, it's going to be this reunion and this, you know, um, joining forces. And Soldier Boy just, it, you know, he says, basically, you you disgust me. He turns into his father. <laughs> Certainly, the retirement home is two blocks. So. Yeah. Did so, you, do you need me to call somebody for you? Can you? <laughs> He's wandered out again. <laughs> He's wandered out. Somebody call his son or his daughter. Was, or was it something I said? <laughs> Mark Shepard, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't mind, we're all just gonna hang out and chat. Is that cool? Are we expecting somebody else? This is an actual panel. Well, it is. This is what panels should have been. I missed you guys. I really missed you guys. It's been a while. How's it going, big guy? It's going good. I'm working for Jared now. That's what I hear. Yeah. But let's be honest. Haven't we always been working for Jared? <laughs> it's a long way up there. The air is thin. Yeah, I'm working for the moose. <laughs> You're working for the moose. How you doing? I'm good. You're doing some crazy stuff on TV right now. I'm really, really, yeah. really amazed. Have you seen him on The Boys? <laughs> we, just talking, we were just talking about that. Uh, the difference between Dean and Soldier Boy. <laughs> yeah. When are you going to get a job? <laughs> I have one. <laughs> really? What are you doing? I'm a skin model. A skin model? <laughs> Nothing ever changes. <laughs> have you got like one of those cheap ass costumes like you did in the last show? Very cheap. <laughs> God, all these people are going to be dressed like you again. I'm going to have a whole new bunch of people to insult. Hey, Mitch, do you get to wear something besides a suit in this new role of yours? <laughs> a suit or nothing is what they Speedos. <laughs> Bungee smugglers. You... <laughs> smugglers. Bungee smugglers. Bungee? If you're in England, they call a speedo, or in Australia, they call them budgies. A budgery gunner is a small bird. It's a budgie. So you're smuggling a budgie. <laughs> in your, in your underwear. It looks like you're, you're stuffing a small bird down your underwear. <laughs> budgie smugglers. So you're smuggling budgies. Right? Am I right? There you go. No, I, I wear a, a pheasant smuggler. <laughs> you're not a pheasant plucker, you're a pheasant plucker son, you're only plucking pheasants until the pheasant plucker comes. <laughs> if you say that when you're drunk, it Are becomes... You <laughs> you're not a pheasant plucker, you're a pheasant plucker son. You're only plucking pheasants until the pheasant plucker comes. <laughs> Try that drunk. I can't do that sober. <laughs> So what's this show you're on? Uh, Gotham Knights. Ooh. Are you Batman? No, I'm not Batman. Who are you? I am Two-Face. Harvey Dent? Very cool. <laughs> you're gonna have like the messed up face? Yeah. Cool. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get the other side of his face proper. <laughs> It was sort of a no-brainer for casting. They're like, we'll put a regular face on the Why have you got Bullhouse chat? Oh, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to serve you. Tips are not required, but they are appreciated. No one's got it? Okay, I'll about the joke. Oh, hey, everyone! This is your table. Oh, oh. Uh, hold on a second, that was pathetic. Ladies oh, and right. gentlemen, Jay Gable! <laughs> Broker's got a brother! Oh. Even oh. half brothers. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hello. Oh, oh, there's one. Hey, we, we were just asking, have you got a job? Well, no. He's got a job, apparently. Have I you got, got a job? I got yeah, a job. No, no. Oh! No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, I know. No, yeah, I know where he is. Oh, shush. I know where he is. You're shooting at a lancer, I heard. By the way, how's, 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 how's,
in Atlanta. Atlanta. Up there. Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Oh wait, now we're not allowed to say that, right? We can say I'm we shooting can... in Atlanta. In Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, we're allowed to say that. You're not shooting in Atlanta. Shh. <laughs> How about you in Chicago? Oh my gosh. Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> the cliff. The cliff. <laughs> so uh, my name, Gabby. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, you guys are still here. <laughs> we, should, uh, we should pick a question. Or we could just talk. I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. Just Just talk? <laughs> Yeah, but the poor woman at the front of the line. Yeah, she's like, oh, I had a question. With a spotlight on her. Why are you pretending she's to like, My now? question is for Jerry. Um, <laughs> I really love you, and I really love you. What's it like working with Jerry? Uh, hi. Hello. Um, you got four of us to pick from. Who do you. I just can't even right now. <laughs> My question is for Jim. <laughs> My question is for Jim. Uh, Jensen first, and then the rest of you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Used to that, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Sloppy seconds, thirds, and fourths. Yeah. I can do it. You have been interviewed so many times, asked so many questions in uh, cons and panels. What is one question that you wish you had been asked and no one has asked? And what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> this is the write your own fan yes. fiction moment. <laughs> She's really making you do all the work. Oh, the work. <laughs> hey, can you cook because a steak? I don't, steak don't want you to answer or to ask a question, but I'm also going to need you to answer it. Hey, make the steak. Um, I, <laughs> steak. Make the steak. You make the steak. It's an in joke. Um. <laughs> I'm happy with that, but you're stronger than me. I guess you should be when Ruth joined my panel. <laughs> oh, the question's yours now, because yes. you're in first position. Yes, the question was, uh, would I like to do a, a, a panel with, um, uh... Interviewing yourself. Interviewing my or, or just do a panel with, um, you know, three duds and a queen. <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to call me a queen anymore. Am I not? Oh, that's right. That's right. Soul boy talking. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the the question or the comment was, what's a question that you wish you have been asked that haven't, and what's the answer? Lost me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't I don't know. I, I usually am, am the one fielding the questions, so I don't really have them locked and loaded. Um, I would say that if I was going to ask me a question, I would ask. Aren't you tired? <laughs> That's the well, can I, can I just add that a lot of times at autographs, uh, people come up and say, you look so tired. <laughs> just as a statement. And tonight there will be an autograph session, and if anyone feels like saying that, maybe don't. <laughs> You're really upset by this. <laughs> I look tired, and that's how we got the role. I'm <laughs> I'm tired twice. <laughs> I know what the que I know what the question is. I know what the question is. Why? <laughs> and the answer is because. <laughs> Thank you. That was a good one. You got a better one. That was, yeah, that's good. You like that one? Good. Print to the game. Um, Next. <laughs> following on from what Misha said, though. Um, it's more about what comments people, I would like people to say, and people say things like, today a lady said, it was so lovely, she said, you're even prettier in real life than you are on screen, which yes. is different to, you're actually pretty in real life. <laughs> Jensen gets that Jensen, all the time. I do, I do get, oh, you're taller than I thought you would be. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Hey now. That's on Jared. Oh, and that's, uh, well, yeah, yeah. We look like midgets on screen. I, you look like midget. <laughs> you bastards. Every time you took a full person photograph of me, you're on tiptoes. And people coming up to me going, you're five foot six in photographs. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not short. I'm only short on this show. And I came along and just made you all look like giants. <laughs> Sorry, who said that? <laughs> Wasn't it, your, wasn't it your wife 
that somebody went up to and said, Oh, your yeah, husband's on Supernatural? It was Jen. Is, is he the tall person? Is he the tall one or the short one? No. <laughs> no, it was even better than that. It was it was Genevieve, and, it, and this, they said, uh, Oh, is, uh, oh, are you are you married to the short one or the one from Seventh Heaven? <laughs> Which is Barry Watson. And she goes, well, neither. <laughs> Very wow, yeah. because Gilmore Girls is also Seventh Heaven. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay, yeah. I got it. I'm in exactly. Seventh Heaven right now. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> Next. Uh, <laughs> hey. Hi, my name is Regina. I'm from Bremerton, Washington. <laughs> just FYI, I'm a late bloomer when it came to Supernatural. I don't know how many panels I saw at San Diego Comic Con with Supernatural. I had no idea who you guys were. <laughs> we knew <need> them. <laughs> Wait, were you in in Hall H watching our panel and not knowing who we were? Pretty much. Yes. And were you just doing that because you wanted to be there for whoever was coming on next? Yeah, Vampire Diaries. Coming on next. It was, it was there. I was there for some other reason. Other than so you trying to tell me right now? We were here as long as seconds. That not everyone in that hall was there for Supernatural? I wasn't even there. Do you know who I am? <laughs> MJ. Guys, guys, the biggest problem is she's actually in she's actually in line for a question at the next Star Trek convention. <laughs> How many people were like her? Yeah. Hall H at, at San Diego Comic Con, it's like six thousand. Seven. It's seven thousand. Seven thousand. You gave them pizza. It's it's so it's, it's a vast. sea of people. The people in the back you can't even see their little pinprints. <laughs> and we always thought they were there to see us. <laughs> this is not waiting to see I'm the not Marvel. Joking. I thought that when we left the stage, they cleared the whole place out and brought in a whole new crowd. You trying to tell me that you suffered through our fans? <laughs> And nothing we said made you want to watch the show? There was nothing that was like, oh, oh I might watch this. We haven't done Comic Con in like three years. I was wondering what the girls were screaming about, so I figured, oh, let me put the show on, and from the first episode, I was like, oh, that's a bit better than what you started with. No, no, guys, 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 let's be straight here. We know for a fact that when that crowd lit those candles for Jared, right, that was to the back wall, so, no. Nah. <laughs> she was on her own. She was the only one who didn't know where she was. No, no, she was like, what did, oh, is, it, is that what we're doing? Okay. <laughs> Obviously, this guy needs some help. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What were you there to see? Vampire Diaries. Oh, who knows? Blood, uh, <laughs> this question is for Patrick Stewart? Wait, what? I mean, honestly, it could have been true. Anyone but. Anyone, anyone but. Anyone but. Anyone I just wasn't giving up my seat or this candle thing they gave me. <laughs> did, you, did you sleep overnight in the line? Oh, oh, did you take some of Misha's pizza? <laughs> Under false pretenses? <laughs> and donuts. From Misha? Yes. <laughs> Still hadn't had seen I, the show. Had I known... <laughs> By then I was watching the show. Oh, and it was because of the show that I stayed overnight. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, All did, right. you, did you have housing at this time? <laughs> Were you just in Hall H for the shelter? <laughs> what are these people doing in my room? But I did have a question. <laughs> Good for you. You know what? Good for you. <laughs> that is all that we have time for. <laughs> That's all the time we have. Moving on. I do have a question. It's for Ian Summerholder. Um, <laughs> 
talk really quick about my Civic and how fast we were going, and you said you go really fast in New Mexico. So this would be for everybody. The fastest I've ever took in my Honda Civic is 127 miles an hour. What is your <laughs> <laughs> Did you have NOS? Are you a Fast and Furious? That's what I was going to say. I was like, what Honda Civic? It was 130. Are you sure it wasn't kilometers? She drove it out of the back of a cargo plane. Is it downstairs? <laughs> It'll do it if it's on fire. <laughs> 2017 Honda Civic Si with turbo. Okay. Okay. All right. I didn't realize we had a Honda sales rep here. <laughs> I've been in airplanes that go slower than that. I bet you could get that for sticker price. <laughs> I think I could. As long as it's better than Jared, so I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I have, uh, Jared used to have a Corvette, uh, years ago, and he let me borrow it one time, and I, 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 I never drove it again. I think I was in the 130s. Really? Yeah. It's not that fast. It was, it's almost well, as fast as a Honda Civic. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather go mud than go fast. Where were you going 130? Who else did you put on a control to go road there? with professionals? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in his driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a school zone. <laughs> What's he been doing 140? <laughs> no, it was uh, it was see the sky. Everyone's cheering, but I don't know what that is. Uh, it's the road up to Whistler. Oh yeah, that was fun. Uh, and then you know that how windy that road yeah, is. Yeah, it's very windy. It's not a straight, it's cool. not a straight cool road. It's not a good cornering car back then. Yeah, nobody told me that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I won't, I won't be doing that again. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. unnecessary. Hey, slow down. I got my ticket the other day, so yeah, I have to slow down. Okay. The fastest for me was 208. Okay, show sure. up. In what? My, uh... Uh, DB11 AMR, Aston Martin. Oh. Then it ran out of gas. Like, that I was I drove, Where were you going? Going? I drove back from New Mexico to, uh, to LA in 10 hours at 1800 RPM at 105 miles an hour the other week, getting 20 miles to the gallon. Because <laughs> it would just turn six cylinders off when it was bored. <laughs> Anyway, I've got motorbikes that go faster than that. That is so hot. It is hot. See? It's hot. I'm hot. No, you're not hot. My car is hot. <laughs> That's it. I'm buying a Honda Civic. <laughs> apparently. Apparently we all need to go out and get ourselves some Hondas, and we need to see you in all age if we ever get back there. She's like, oh, I'll be there, but I won't be to see you guys. Is the pizza or donuts? What about Emerald City, Rose City, Comic-Con? Yeah. I was just in New York for New York Comic Con. Well, listen, I can't be at all of them. <laughs> but we could be here, and I'm glad you're here. Thank you. She's from Texas. I live in Athens, which is kind of southeast of Dallas. Oh, my brother lives there. there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is uh, the last question of the panel. This complete uh, debacle of the panel. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm definitely blaming you. Uh, um, <laughs> where did Jake go? What? Jake? He, he left. He knows where to leave. He knows. He knows. <laughs> oh, 
And what, what, is, like, what is your question? It's just, Jensen, well, it's like a rope that came down. Like, mm -hmm. My question is very specific. You have to excuse Wait, our. Uh, uh, it's yeah. a Jensen question? He has taken his meds. You really, are you sure you want to do that? Last question. I mean, it could have also sort of applied to Jared, but. He's not here. So if you want to answer. Sure. It's just, you can try to answer it. What happened? The question, this last question is for you. Okay, I'd love to answer it. What's going on? So, uh, my question for Jensen is... Oh. <laughs> um, so, we know that um, you worked with Daniil on Ten and Chiro when you were just kind of getting started. What is kind of the biggest difference, or, or in what way was it different, acting with her again when she was on the show? Well, when she came on Supernatural? Yes. Um, it was much like it is in the kitchen on a normal basis. <laughs> she uh, calls out the fact that I'm not on my mark, and she's like, are you really going to say it like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be like, you know, um, get her in my Dean thing, and she's like, Oh, why? What is? <laughs> what are we this? doing? <laughs> yeah, she's like, what are we doing? And I'm like, this is this is, uh, this is 15 years. And she's like, I know, but really, are we? Is, is anybody believing the voice at this point? And I'm like, you're, you're kind of embarrassing me in front of my crew right now. And she's like, you've been embarrassing yourself for 15 seasons. <laughs> That's, That's actually spot like. on, by the way. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's true. And that's why I love her because she keeps me honest. Um, no, it was uh, it was very it, much like working with anybody that you get along with in real life. It it makes the, the work not work at all. It makes it fun when you get to when you get to do that kind of stuff and you get to play and you get to find the nuance. And I think that's something that this show carried uh, for for 15 seasons in a way that I haven't seen. I haven't experienced anything like it. Um, every player got to really play. And so Danielle was like, oh, this is what you guys do all day long. She's like, and I thought you were working. <laughs> That's what it was like. It was great having her up on the show. It really was. Do you remember the first, her very I, first I, scene I, I was, I was the three of us, you and me, Jared, walk up, and it's like outside that motel or something, and she's yeah. like, he's, he's up there, yeah. that Lucifer. And Jared comes in, like, comes in hot. And he's like, where is he? <laughs> and no joke, she did it to him. She goes, oh, is that how you're going to do it? <laughs> Put him on his ass. Like, he was just like, what? By huh? the way, the rest of the <laughs> and he, and yeah, he, yeah, he was a little, he came in a little hot in that moment. Um, listen, we don't, all, we don't always hit home runs every day. Um, and, and did you... <laughs> Danielle is a little bit of, uh, she's a kind of a brutal, honest kind of person, and uh, she has a filter, but just decides never to use it. Um, and in that moment, I just, I was so beaming with, like, pride, and, and looking at him going like, ah, see what it feels like? Don't hit me. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what it's like. Did he uh, panic? Did he panic? There was a little shudder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, do you, what do you mean? And she's like, never mind. <laughs> and then for the rest of that whole scene, he was like, trying to figure out how to do what he needed to do. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's playing dirty. <laughs> the sniper, that one. Much like this one. This one here. <laughs> no, no. I did say to Misha one time, though, but we didn't know each other very well. He, he only just heard me. You were doing a bit where you were possessed or something on the ground. I don't know what you were doing. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, said, I think I was just doing, I think he was on lunch. <laughs> and I said, oh, is that the way you're going to do that? Touchy <laughs> 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 to the quick. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you for the last question. <laughs>